I am Ryan Murphy. This is kind of a different video because my knee hasn't been feeling very good. I might have skied a little bit too hard the past couple of days. I'm making a more low-key video talking about the specifics of ski mountaineering equipment. Why I specifically use it, why maybe you should use it, why maybe you shouldn't use it, and why the features it has exists. I don't know how to do this type of video. Throw it up the whole thing. The word schemo, schemo, which is kind of a nickname for ski mountaineering. A mixture of ski touring skills and mountaineering skills, uh, using them both together to ski technical skiing lines. Schemo racing is a race that's based on efficiency that you utilize all of uh, your ski mountaineering skills in a controlled and competitive environment. So a lot of times it'll be on a ski mountain, especially in North America. It's a race uphill, and sometimes that's doing switchbacks, sometimes that's going straight up a trail, sometimes uh, that's boot packing with your skis on your back. All the gear is uh, put together to be as efficient as possible. It's gonna work every time, uh, do you favors after you learn how to use it. So we're gonna get right into talking about some of the gear. Okay, so we're going to start off with talking about a pretty fundamental part of ski mountaineering. Here is a very popular ski touring and ski mountaineering boot. It is called the Fisher Traverse. This particular boot is a couple of years old, but they still make it in a relatively same shape. They make one with carbon cuff now. My first season ever racing ski mo, I used one of these boots on my race skis and it was an awesome time. This boot is also great for ski touring, so if you just wanna ski some glades, if you wanna do some ski touring at your local resort, that's great for this. This is a pretty lightweight boot, um, but skis relatively well for the range of motion that you have with it. This boot uh, is usually meant to ski a ski, I'd say. Uh, you can definitely ski a race ski with it. I really wouldn't ski this on any ski that's too much bigger than 90 millimeters underfoot. We'll probably out ski this boot, but I'd be interested to hear if anybody has skied a larger ski, maybe a Ranger or something on one of these traverses. This boot will do it all if you want to ski a relatively light setup and maybe occasionally race on it. Now talking about the Atomic Backland Ultimate, proper ski mountaineer racing boot. It's also super flexible, so it skis like a cross country ski boot. I do occasionally ski it on my 80 underfoot Fisher Trans Alps. I believe this might be a little bit too light for that kind of ski, but I have learned to love it and it does you a lot of favors on the uphill, I gotta say. I skied some steep train in it, and I can tell you right now, uh, you can really feel some flex. Best used on groomed train with a light ski. Like a race ski. Talk about the liners that are in these boots. These liners are about half the weight of the ones that are in the traverses. The liner in this particular boot, the Fisher Traverse, is a fairly traditional looking liner. It is relatively lightweight, offers some protection around the shin, is quite flexible, and has some bend areas in there. Opposed to this sock-like foam liner. I've patched this up a couple of times, I don't really have any issues with it, but I am looking to get a new one of these. Next we're going to talk about skins and the different types mainly used in schema. On the lightest of light skis and on any race ski is this front rip style that has this kind of bendy tab that notches into this notch in the top of the ski here. You'll see the rear has no clip that attaches at the end here. It just sits flush on the back and we usually don't really have any problems with that unless it's particularly wet snow and then you can see if you slip back a little bit it can drag it up and then you could get snow under there and it could slowly rip off like so. That usually doesn't happen unless it's bad conditions. With these skins you just reach forward and you pull off the front and then you rip the skin off the back. It works really well for ski touring on your local resort or doing smaller shorter tours. Honestly for longer tours uh, I like the reliability of having something with a tail clip. It's just a nice peace of mind. But the main benefit of this skin system, a lot faster. Take your skins off with your skis on your feet. This is the best system, super efficient. Next we have a more traditional style skin with a tail clip back here and holds tension along the base of the skin. We really don't experience too many issues with water or it being too cold and these skins coming off. So these work really great, but uh, this is a great skin. Pomoka really does make the, the best skins in town. 
So next we're gonna talk about Schemo pants. I have a set of La Sportiva ones here that I wear a lot because they work really well and they hold up great. But basically with the Schemo pant, you don't need anything super fancy. I recommend something that's a soft shell and that's pretty thin because uh, you're gonna want something that's really breathable and hopefully windproof. That's kind of the idea, breathable and windproof. Any light soft shell pants work great. These happen to be pretty fancy ski mountaineering race pants. You'll see on the sides here, there's a couple of holes so that you can access the buckles of your boots without having to pull your pants up above your boot to access the buckles. They work really well. They look super nerdy. Access for your lever and for your cuff buckle right here. I have done some deeper snow boot packing in those pants and you do get some snow stuffed up there. If you're at the resort or uh, touring any firm snow, you're never gonna have an issue. I'm gonna quickly talk about my choice in base layers. I don't have any up here with me, but I always recommend Patagonia's Capoline base layers. It's all about how the base layer fits you, less so about the thickness of the base layer itself. If you have a nice fitting, even pretty thin base layer, that's gonna keep you very warm, very efficiently, and also wick away any sweat that is on your skin. That is something that's really important, especially if you're wearing multiple breathable layers. Speaking of breathable insulation layers, this goes in my backpack every time I go on any ski tour. In case like, I just wanna like sit down, check out the view, have a beer, something like that. If I need to tour with it on, this breathes really well, much better than you would see with like a shiny nylon outer puffy. Quickly, I just wanna talk about a product that everybody is probably used to at this point is called like whatever you wanna call it. I just usually call them buffs. These are super helpful for wearing around your neck. Like this is probably my favorite way. And then a lot of times I'll uh, wear one of these just like this underneath my helmet. It keeps the top of my head very breathable. If it is colder out, I'm gonna make it into a hat thing and then have my helmet right on top of that. I usually have two of these on my body if I'm at ski touring, unless it's a really hot day. You know, there's honestly not that much to be said. I'm gonna quickly touch on the topic of gloves. People ask me about my gloves all the time. I love just like cheap, stretchy gas station gloves. If they're windproof and grippy, I'm so about it. I know I talked about insulation before and I touched quickly on soft shells. Really any soft shell product is great for ski touring. Soft shell is really the name of the game for ski mountaineering and ski mountain racing. This jacket right here is made by Dinafit, so it is specifically made for ski touring. And the neat feature that this jacket has, huge zippers with these big pockets. And these big pockets are made for it, so you can fold up your skins and just zip them inside those pockets. There's a feature that you wouldn't think that you need and you don't, but it is really convenient when you have it. Next, we're gonna talk about Schemo backpacks. I really like using the Ultimate Direction brand of backpacks. Uh, they fit me really well, they're super durable. They've been doing it for years, so I think this is a really good choice. Uh, I've gotten a lot of use out of them. So some of the special features that this backpack has is obviously right on the side here, there's something called the crampon garage where you can open it like so. And the idea with that pocket is so you can open it like this and grab your crampons out of it without even taking the pack off. This backpack also has the feature to put your skins on your pack without taking your backpack off and then also take them off. And so there's kind of this wire hook thing on this bungee cord, putting your skis on your back and uh, taking them off um, all without taking off your backpack. It's really great. That's one of those efficiency features in ski mountaineering gear that uh, is kind of special. Ultimate Direction also makes an even lighter version of the pack, and this is for sprint racing, which are really short, quick races that involve taking your skis off your feet and putting them on your back uh, and running up boot packs pretty frequently. So this has the same ski system from the other pack. This one's just a lot lighter, just less to it. These packs are really great because they have uh, hydration access right from the chest of it, so you can just uh, lean down and drink out of any soft flask from there. So you pretty much don't need to take these packs off unless you need to access what's in this back big pocket, which is usually like a puffy jacket, bigger mitten. You can keep all your nutrition up front. The other thing I have found you need to take this pack off is to put your ice axe on the side of it. You can't do that with the backpack still on.
the last interesting features that this backpack has is this little pocket that's on the breast, which perfectly fits my beacon, a Peeps free ride beacon, popular schemo specific beacon that's really lightweight. Honestly, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. It has pretty good search functionality. It definitely takes some practice to use though. I've done a lot of function testing and I've learned to use it quite well and you really don't need to be sacrificing weight with your beacon. While we're talking about avalanche equipment, I really believe in a super solid metal shovel for any time you expect to be digging is basically any time you're in avalanche uh, conditions you want to be ready to dig at any point and this shovel is made by black diamond and it's super rugged very reliable this breaks down and i'm able to fit both of these in that backpack i was showing you so i can always have it on me and uh, i can take the homies out if need be it's good to really practice with your shovel and know how you can dig with it so i encourage you to hop in your snowbank your driveway and just dig around maybe make a fort with your shovel it's just good to know how it digs and to feel comfortable using it and now a shovel i do not recommend to anybody and there's only very specific times i will pack this shovel this is what's called a snow claw which it looks like a mini sled thing almost. It actually works pretty good for moving soft snow if you really need to, but if there's any situation where I could even see anybody else in an avalanche location, I never bring this shovel. I would really not want to dig with this one unless I really, really have to. I've also practiced with this one and I feel pretty comfortable with it even on pretty firm snow, but this is not a shovel I bring on group ski tours. This is only if I'm by myself in an area that I've been the past few days and I'm very familiar with the conditions. Lastly, for avalanche gear, I'd like to talk about a probe. I recommend a full-size probe, a nice really long one. I think these are 240 centimeters. That is a nice long probe. You want the full submersion length if you can get it because you want the best chance possible to dig out your partners or whoever you might come across in an avalanche scenario but i wouldn't recommend saving weight on a probe this is really something that could save a life while we're on the topic of general safety equipment i'd like to talk about my favorite ice axe this is a petzl glacier light ride this ice axe is great in part partnership with these camp crampons they're aluminum i don't remember the actual name for them crampons are freaking awesome i feel like these weigh like 1.4 pounds for the pair so between this and this you're really not carrying much weight these are required for any alpine ski mountaineering uh, that you'll be doing especially here in the northeast in the presidential range you'll want a good short ice axe and a nice set of light aluminum crampons the last piece of safety equipment I'll be talking about is my favorite speed comp helmet by Camp, and this has a really nice sticker selection on it. This helmet has been with me through multiple avalanches, a bunch of crashes that I haven't hit my head really badly on, but this helmet is phenomenal. It's super rugged. I inspect it all the time to make sure there's no cracks or anything in it, even from like just tossing it in my car or whatever. But this helmet fits really great over a buff like this or a thin hat. It has a nice dial in the back so it sits snugly. All sorts of straps on the side of it on the back for securing a headlamp or some goggles. Most of the time when you are doing ski mountaineering activities, you're going uphill for 80% of the time. So you want a nice long pole to propel you up the hill and for using while you're gliding on flat areas. A lot of people ask, are you skiing with cross country ski poles? Yeah, they're basically cross country ski poles. Even if you get a Schemo specific branded Dina Fit pole, they're gonna be cross country ski poles. It's pretty much what they are. The poles also have a Nordic style basket on there. Uh, just for the same reason as the whole Nordic theme of the poles. The thing we're going to talk about is the skis. And right here I have a proper Schemo race ski. And then I've got a really just solid ski mountaineering slash touring ski right here. First thing I'm going to talk about is the Schemo race ski. This is a Fisher Alpatac. I think it's the 2017 year or something. Apparently a lot of people broke this model of ski. Super, super mega light. I think the whole setup is like 800 grams or something. It's a short, thin ski and it's really stiff. This ski is really for somebody who just wants the lightest ski possible for basically strictly resort skiing laps. Uh, or somebody who wants to get into racing and wants the the ski that's really going to do them favors and put them in a competitive place for racing. My first and only race ski. I've had it for two years now. I love it so much. I got it at 
the best local shop in town and that's Ski the Whites. On this ski, I have DinaFit race binding. I don't remember the tech behind it. It's got a weird plastic like nylon heel piece that looks like it'll break, but it's held up awesome. This is the difference between your boot being clipped in and your boot not being clipped in. My next ski here, I have my Fisher Transalp, and this is my go-to ski for really anything. It is 80 underfoot, and it's basically shaped kind of like a slalom ski. It has a turning radius of 17 and a half, which is pretty good, pretty nimble ski. I have my favorite binding of all time on here, the Dinafit Speed Turn. It's just bulletproof, two climbing settings, and then you get like a neutral setting as well. This is the only binding you need. I would throw it on anything under 100 underfoot. This ski in particular, I would recommend for if you're getting into ski touring, are already into touring, but wanna get a lighter setup. If you wanna ski your backyard, your local resort, uphill laps, you wanna ski Tuckerman's Ravine, or a Gulf of Slides, anything like that, this is the ski you want, the Fisher Transalp. They make it in a variety of widths on their foot and they can cater really to anything you want to throw at it. This is the frickin' ski. Last thing I'm gonna show because it is probably the least relevant to the least amount of people and it is the Schemo race suit. This is for really racing only or if you want to really be full-blown out there on your ski tours. They're very useful. They have a huge pocket right in the chest, so you can fit multiple pairs of skins and keep them warm during races. It has a nice pocket for your phone or your spot device there. And then like La Sportiva pants, this has a hole in the back for the lever so you can operate it without pulling up your pants. It has a strap that goes underneath your boot to just make it Full aerodynamic and pull it tight. These race suits honestly are probably less so about aerodynamics and more so about breathability and efficiency. They work really well for racing but I find that I get really cold if I'm not doing that kind of pacing in the winter. But you can see the back of it is entirely this mesh material so it breathes incredible and I gotta say it looks kind of legit too so it's pretty fun to wear. That was my schemo gear breakdown. I hope somebody got something out of this video because it was a lot harder to make than I thought. I had to write out a huge thing and I uh, hope to see everybody out there. I hope this shed some light on this weird sport. All right. I'm gonna have you